Cavs about ready to play in six days. We're recording this on Thursday. Six days away. Tony Camino there. I'm Andy Billman here. We're talking Eastern Conference matchups. We did the Celtics, the Heat, the Bucks. Time to talk about the Knicks. Tony, your thoughts. He does a great article on BelieveInTheLand.com talking about this in depth. Tony, give a short summary. What is your matchup feelings with the Cavs and Knicks this year? Neither team we neither team had the loudest offseason. We actually made more noise than they did. Mm-hmm. Crazy enough with just Struess and Niang and Jerome. I think with the improvements for Mobley and Garland and really just the whole team with the new offensive scheme of we're going to push the ball more, we're going to have movement, we're going to space it, we're going to shoot threes. I like the matchup against the Knicks and – so long as Julius Randle doesn't start performing in the playoffs or mm. R.J. Barrett makes a leap into another tier of a player, the Knicks don't really worry me as long as we can play a little bit better on the interior against Mitchell Robinson and Hartenstein. Just rebound, folks. The Knicks have a nose for rebounding. Thibodeau's known for that. Um, he comes from that definite camp. That's my biggest worry about the Knicks, Tony. They really rebound the ball well. And then there's this bizarre thing that's not bizarre, but Brunson's a good player. Brunson and Mitchell, and I, I, I want to be fair and neutral here. I love Mitchell. Mitchell doesn't do so great against Brunson. I don't know why that is, um, but he does not seem to play with the same edge. And Brunson seems to always have a, a thing over him. What are your thoughts on that one? I think it's hard because that five-game series we saw is a nice extended size, but mm-hmm. we were playing with such a cluttered offense with – yeah, Coral. We had so many non-shooters at the floor at the same time that basically if Donovan and DG couldn't beat the guys on a pull-up jumper, the second they got past their guys, everybody collapsed on them. So yeah. neither of them played well in that series, really. I don't want to sit here and defend them just blindly. But when you don't have the help because they're not worried about anybody else but you two, it's hard to score. And I think that changes with Struess and Niang and all the shooters we got this year, the Shooting philosophy is going to just create so many more open lanes for Mitchell and Garland to drive. I do think the shooting thing is going to be a big help, obviously. I also think, too, in moments of panic, where Robinson does start rebounding a lot, which he seems to do against the Cavs, um, this is where you do call on your old veteran TT. Tristan Thompson, you don't have to play a long stretch, but play for three or four minutes and calm this down. And that will, that does make me feel better here, Tony. And I mean that. I think in these kind of matchups, that is where you'll see Tristan a little bit more. Not a lot, but it's a little bit more moments where it's like, hey, like, can you just box out Robinson for a few possessions here and settle this game down just a touch? Because that's the one thing that the Cavs, um, I thought, really struggled with the Knicks, obviously. But also, the Knicks are one of the rare teams. They not just have size. They have a lot of size. Uh, Hardenstein, who I actually enjoy. I thought he played well for the Cavs here. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's a good player. And then you have Robinson, as we mentioned. And even some of the other players are taller, just bigger players. I think that does bother the Cavs here. Um, Now, to the other point here. Does their offensive explosions bother me? Nope. Do I think that they have better shooters than the Cavs? Actually, now, no, I don't. No. Um, It's just about flow and rhythm. And what I mean by that is, like, the Knicks – had as in for the last two seasons, I've had a flow and rhythm against the Cavs. It's bothered them. Let's see if the Cavs can get into more of a rhythm this year against them. They play them early. I think that's going to be a big, a big point in this game. And don't let Brunson get in these games. That's my big note. Brunson gets settled quickly against the Cavs and just seems to just start chopping wood. It's like to say, just starts get, feeding the ball. And the Knicks really move fluently when he's playing well, obviously. Yeah, we got two straight games against them, like, right at the end of this month. So it's going to be a nice test early to see where we're at, see where they're at. Brunson, that is the other big key. So I think the three biggest things that went wrong in the playoffs were the rebounding, the lack of spacing ruined the offense, and nobody, because of the lack of spacing, we tried to play Chetty more. And what that resulted in was Jalen Brunson hunting him down every single time. Screen, You're setting me a screen, Chetty switch on to me, and we saw it over and over. He couldn't guard him. Max yep. Struess is not some all NBA world class defender, but he managed to consistently get minutes for the Heat year in and year out because he wasn't a liability. He he's not going to hold Jalen Brunson to a bad shooting night and completely right. throw him off his game. But they're not going to come down the court and just hunt him every single time and get a bucket on him at will. And that's a huge change with the spacing. And then hopefully, just Mobley and Allen can rebound better. 
with the more experience and another year in the weight room for Mobley. So yeah. I think it's it should be at the end of the year that they're in a tier below us. I don't think we're on the same level. I would like not that we're going to be quite in that tier with the Celtics, but I think we're we are a little bit better than them. I would think that we have a better chance to make a surprise conference finals run than they do, but we saw how it happened last year, so we'll see. I understand what Tony's saying, and Tony's not wrong to say it. I'm on the opposite fence. I think the Knicks and Cavs are even. I really do. Um, I think the Cavs have to do some growing up against playing the Knicks. And I'll tell you the other factor that helps the Cavs now. Josh Hart, when he was in there, was really a problem because he got rebounds, A, and B, he could outshoot whoever's on the floor. Um, it really, really caused problems. That probably is not going to happen as much. Uh, Struess helps that. Helps that out a lot. Um, the big thing, I, can, I can't say this enough, Thibodeau – preaches clearly getting to the boards. Cavs are going to have to just figure that out and making more shots. I am. I will say this to the Cavs come home. You make more shots, it does loosen up that rebounding. The Knicks are now forced to come out and guard you, and that's and that should be that should be a big help this year. Struce, Niang, bring Robinson out. Bring Josh Hart's not going to, as you said, float around the floor. Um, the, when you have a shooter like Struce, you have to take it seriously. Yeah. Those things will help big with the Cavs this year. Cavs and Knicks, it's interesting. Big games early. Big games back-to-back. Uh, in At, at the Rock and Mortgage, I better say a Q. That's the old days. Hmm. Rock and Mortgage, and they go right to the Garden. Believeintheland.com. Check out Tony's article. He and I will be covering the Cavs all season long. Almost here. Almost here. Have a good one.